The Canadian Transportation Agency has ruled Air Transat failed its passengers during delays on the tarmac at the Ottawa airport. The agency has released a report into the ordeal of two Air Transat planes that were diverted from Montreal to Ottawa on July 31st. It says Air Transat should have been able to fulfill its obligation to passengers for food, drink and an opportunity to get off the plane. Air Transat has been fined $295,000 for violating its tariff agreement with passengers. To discuss this, we are joined by Gabor Lukac of Air Passenger Rights. Gabor, thanks for joining us. Good morning. What's your take on this, uh, on the result here? This is a publicity stunt. The Canadian Transportation Agency did not actually fine Air Transat the way that most people understand it. When you look at the fine print, the fine has actually been waived. So this fine is, really means nothing at the end, and explain that, what you, what you mean by that. Uh, the fine was issued, and on the same day, at the same time, there was a cover letter issued, which says that Air Transat can reduce the amount of fine it has to pay by the amount of compensation paid out to passengers. Already back in August, Air Transat paid $400 to passengers in compensation. So when you multiply 400 times 590 passengers, it looks like perhaps by paying passengers an additional $100 per passenger, Air Transit is off the hook and it will pay $0 fine. Could there have been a, a bigger fine that would have made a difference or a, a, a better punishment for the airline, do you think? There could have been a much bigger fine. Violating the uh, tariff obligations this way carries a penalty of $10,000 per violation. There have been 590 passengers, so the maximum fine could have been $5.9 million. What has been issued and what Air Transit is not going to pay is 5%, less than one-tenth. It's actually it's one-twentieth of the amount that could have been issued. The ruling also says that Air Transat's tariff agreement is just too broad. It gives the pilots too much discretion. Um, what do you, what's your take on that? I mean, how important is it at the end of the day that airlines put their passengers' needs and safety first when it comes to these tariff agreements? Uh, the issue here is not the tariff agreement as much as the enforcement of the tariff agreement. The current tariff, as it read in August, already allowed passengers to disembark after 90 minutes, already provided passengers the right for beverages and food after 90 minutes, yet it wasn't honored. So the question is not simply what we put in the tariff, but rather is it being enforced? And the decision to waive the fine sends the message to airlines that if you break the rules, we will slap you on the wrist, but in reality, we are not going to hit your bottom line. What kind of rights do we have then um, as passengers? Because if we're learning in this case, that the airlines are just going to be slapped on the wrist, not really penalized. Do we have any rights here as a, at all as passengers? Passengers could, and in my view, should sue in this case as part of a class action where they can properly be compensated for the damage they suffered. Now, the federal government has introduced a passenger bill of rights. It's currently being held up in the Senate. Uh, do you feel this could make a difference uh, for passengers that are considering... Uh, any airline decisions after this? Not at all. The uh, air passenger bill without rights is a piece of legislation that helps mainly the airlines to maintain the status quo. It contains no specific provisions. And it actually proposes to increase the length of acceptable tarmac delay from the current 90 minutes to three hours. Mm. This is a step back. And it is not being held up by the Senate, but it looks like, after all, there is some sober second thought in the Senate to properly scrutinize this bill, because at the level of the House of Commons, this was simply rammed through and no proper scrutiny took place. There was some uh, hearings before the House of Commons Standing Committee, but the concerns that many participants in that uh, process brought to the table were not seriously considered by the government. So perhaps a good thing that it is in the Senate right now and uh, under good scrutiny. Thanks very much for that, Gabor. Appreciate your opinions. Thank you very much for having me.